it's probably not going to be as bad as when you have like a a faceless company that yes doesn't give that a has crap protocols and they just yeah, do things they robotically. Move. I cannot change the past. <laughs> Cannot move back in our system. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. All right, let's do this. You ready? Finding Our Tribe, a podcast about teaching and supporting each other in our common profession. With Fabian Hoffman and Scott Kazarian. Hey everybody, welcome to Finding Our Tribe. Uh, this is episode 36 of season two. Fabian Hoffman. That's me. Scott Kazarian. I That's am here you. and we're really excited uh, for another day. We're, we appreciate you being listeners uh, and part of our tribe. We'd love for you to share out um, this podcast with other teachers that maybe just need a little bit of community. I know we all need a little bit of that. Um, yep. in fact, uh, you know, I think at my school, I'm actually struggling to find that community still. Like it's mm, the first okay. year back from COVID, uh, after COVID. And so my first year was with COVID. And so I like, I get, uh, like some of, I get like some connection, but then even like a friend that I thought, or a, uh, uh, a work proximity associate that I thought was going to uh, become, I was just going to say friends. Yeah. It was going to become than more me. than that kind of just like backed off. And I was like, Oh, yeah. bummer. That could have been fun. Yeah. Uh, for whatever reason, I just walked into your classroom and we were like best buds from the start. Well, uh, I didn't, I wouldn't, it was, that's it, was not it. It's, it was not mutual. It was not mutual. I was down. like, that's, that's, yeah, uh-huh. let's pump the brakes yeah. a little bit. What is it? What, First what day, let's do a podcast married, together. They say, like, I chased you until you caught me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what, yeah, that was, that was like, it. that was a special, that special time. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah. if, if you have uh, friends and colleagues out there that you, uh, that probably need some community too, we'd love for you to share the podcast with them. And be a yep. part of the tribe. Uh, speaking that of true. that, uh, a tribe mate has uh, sent us an email. Uh, oh, yeah. First, <laughs> our first email uh, from Southwest I Ohio. So so S- I don't know if it just spelled SOS or something. I don't know. I don't know either. Is that, I, uh, I don't speak Morse code. I yeah, just it's did true. It. Maybe we could just read the email and see what happens. But um, could, anyway, that, yeah. Charlie, uh, <laughs> Charlie, Cyrus, Char- Charlie Cyrus, Miley Cyrus, Cyrus. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie Myrus. <laughs> Uh, sent us a uh, wonderful email, our first email, just to encourage us, and we really appreciate it. Do, you, uh, do we Marley read it? I don't know Cyrus. if we read it. No, well, we're really glad, Charlie. Thanks no, I'm for I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it because it's it was really nice. Uh, it so was, um, we like yeah. flattery. So, so go ahead. Yeah, uh, Scott and Fabian, Fabian and Scott. I didn't know whose name to put first. Scott, I would say it's me. Yeah. No, it's Fabian first because yeah. it's Fabian. we're doing it alphabetically. Well, mine only has one syllable. Yours has like a billion, so I feel like Scott. <laughs> Should we go first? Go ahead. Fabian and Scott. Yep. Fabian nope. Scott. Okay. Okay. Well, we're getting uh, off track. You're, oh, here we go. You're doing an amazing, that's capitalized, job. I appreciate your candor and vulnerability as well as your willingness and courage to share things you are trying out in class, even if something didn't go perfectly. In my opinion, one of the dangers with teachers sharing things online is that they might paint a picture of something that is so perfect. And then another teacher might feel like they didn't do something correctly or they weren't good enough to pull a lesson off when we all know when we all know but no less is ultimately perfect and that everything is a constant iterative iterative process i can't read anymore anyway i'll get off (laughs) my soapbox and continue to enjoy (laughs) yeah i know (laughs) and to enjoy your most recent podcast keep up the great work charlie myris southwest ohio yes thank you uh charlie that's awesome and uh we really do we mess things up all the time just uh for you and for the rest of the uh (laughs) for the tribe mates (laughs) for the tribe out there yeah uh, this we t- could today. We could let me do just it tell a perfectly. funny story. Today, yeah. I was walking across the grass on campus to one of my mm-hmm. inclusion classes, and I swear something was like on me, like in my mind, like a tarantula, but it must have been like a fly or something. So I started yeah. like swatting it really <laughs> fast, and I look up, and a kid is just standing there laughing at me, like out <laughs> loud, like falling over, <laughs> like Mister yeah. Kaz, what are you doing? And then. <laughs> I saw him later in the day as he walked by my classroom, and he stopped and looked at me, and then just started laughing again, and then kept walking. <laughs> so, uh, awesome! A dose of humility from us. Uh, we appreciate uh, that yeah. feedback, my uh, Charlie. 
I just like it, he's right. It's like you when you when you do peruse like places, I don't know, like teacher pay teachers where everything looks so perfect or when you see people sharing this stuff out, it's there's so many people who just look at things and uh don't really share like they they have great stuff they just don't share. And um even though it might be worth sharing, you know what I mean? So it's like it's kind of like when when I started doing presentations at um And like conferences. Oh, conferences. Um, oh, yeah. Do you do many yeah. of those? Uh, any we'll talk any, about that in a any coming up? Just um, curious. But when when I started that, it was like <laughs> I I didn't think that I had anything worth talking about. And then just going to a conference and seeing what people are presenting on, I'm like, I'm doing like the same stuff and, and or different stuff. It's that's not like any different. You know, it's like it's still worth talking about. It's not like they're super special. Wow. It's just they just Ouch for them. No. Well, <laughs> here's what Go I mean. on, tell us about conference speakers who aren't special. Keep going. Keep, That's not what I mean. What I mean going. is yeah, like just, there's people you know, they put on their socks at, one foot at a time. They you know Exactly. And they're yeah. they're presenting stuff they do in their classroom and it's not it doesn't it's I always thought you have to be like earth shatteringly changing the world kind of a person to present when no boring old you can do it no problem exactly when yep. boring old me can do it everybody also can do i think it, it's you can put on your say. pants one foot at one leg at a time i don't think it's socks but i messed that up we'll have to check well, that later how do you put on your socks do you put on socks, <laughs> one foot socks? at a time but i think no, the, no. i think the do image go, <laughs> do you go socks socks shoe shoe or do you go sock shoe sock shoe that's crazy you put on your socks first obviously and then yeah. you slide around the hardwood floor a little bit Yeah. Wake up your neighbors and then you put on your shoes. <laughs> and then you put on your shoes. Yep. Or you're in Hawaii and you just wear slippers. That's okay. true. No, I don't so, wear slippers. Um, I can't have open toes and teach. It just feels like too uh, yeah, no, vulnerable. That's, that's it's gross. Weird. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've seen your toes. It's not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. No that. offense. Well, okay. I was going to say uh, the power of a 3D printer. I had a student and. Oh, you uh, don't want to hear about my great announcement? Oh, uh, oh, what? Did you get there? I don't know where we got. You were so I busy was, uh, I like, was about telling to get people there. how boring they are that I don't think we ever got there. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. What's your announcement? Uh, so the big announcement is that Jamie, Halsey, and I are going to present at Fall Q here in California. Woo, woo. And virtually. Virtually. And it's pretty cool. We're going to talk. We have two sessions. We have one on gamification, which is kind of based on our podcast series where she was a guest on uh, called Jedi in the Classroom. Yeah, go figure. And uh, then the other one is on mini games. Um, we were going to be focusing on uh, how to pull off some mini games. And since we are virtual, it kind of got moved. It was supposed to be in person. Now it's moved to all virtual. We're going to uh, try and figure out some uh, virtual games that you can play. And also, if you are in person, games you can play with your students. That's really so. awesome. And because yeah. it's virtual. Like even I could go because originally you, I got voted out of the tribe because I'm not yeah. a Cali kid anymore, yeah. And uh, and so now I can even go. Although you, I'm not sure I want to come to yours because I feel like I would just be like, wait, I could do that. That's just boring. Exactly, it's it's boring old it. stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really exciting. I'm excited for yeah. both of you and for us as a podcast. Uh, we're yeah. thinking T-shirts. We don't really know how does virtual T-shirts work. I don't know. I'll, I'll be wearing a t-shirt. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm not going to sit there without without a t-shirt. Yeah, that's that would true. be weird. I meant like yeah. finding our tribe ones. But oh yeah, yeah. no. Po we're yeah, we're thinking about doing pot swag stuff. Yeah. So maybe we we'll do, see. Like, maybe give maybe there will be something, something to people that come to the podcast. Uh, can you or to the to the PDs? What do you yeah. call them in a session? A session? I don't really know. A session? Yeah. Uh, sure. Like what? Do you, yeah, I don't know. So um, can they find out more about where do they find out about signing up? Can you put that in the show notes? Uh yes I can yeah, fall it's, Q um fall Q which I learned last and year was C U E and not the letter Q exactly yep yeah. fall Q twenty twenty one um it is the website is uh, just called Q dot org okay and Q. then org. you can you can click your way through there but Great. I'll put it in the show notes directly. thank you okay power of a three D printer I uh, had a student who was having some behavioral Uh, issues and was trying to figure out a way for him to be able to communicate with me and with our class and with other teachers without having to verbalize. And I made a card that was like one color on one side and one color on the other side. And depending on what he showed, 
was how he was feeling. It was almost like a mood meter for him of whether we should engage him or not. Mm-hmm. And that worked really well until he crumpled up that piece of paper that I laminated <laughs> and threw it in the trash because uh, he was upset. But he yeah. loves 3D prints, and I knew this about him. So I 3D printed uh, two-sided, two-colored. I just stopped halfway and then changed the color. Oh, like smart. A, a card, it even had a hole in it uh, that he made into a keychain, and now he is like super into it. And I mm. thought, oh, man, the power of just taking a piece of paper that was laminated – and changing it into this, you know, a piece of plastic, a piece of plastic, <laughs> or I mean, really changed the game for him in yeah. regards to his, even his buy in to this whole trying to communicate in different yeah. ways. So, um, yeah, 3D printing, I'm doing a lot of it at the moment too, because I'm trying, still trying to figure stuff out with it and I'm testing things. And I have students who are like coming up to me before class and like, what are you printing today? What is that? And uh, some students are like totally taken aback when I, when I tell them, if you want to print something, just let me know. Send it to me via email. And they're like, wait, what? I don't have to pay for having mm-hmm. something printed. And I'm like, no, I don't know what I'm doing, so it might take a while <laughs> before it's done. But uh, yeah, sure. I anytime. printed a Grogu, a Baby Yoda, yeah. for uh, one of my vice principals because it was her birthday. But okay. I forgot to add supports. And so as it was printing, mm. what it looked like was Grogu uh, with hairy armpits because the plastic <laughs> had kind of just drizzled down. And so I was like, okay, I better <laughs> redo this. So it's definitely a learning curve. I leave all of it the is. ones that I fail on out. Yeah. So that students can touch them and play with them. Whenever they ask, what is all this out here for? I said, I want you to see how much I fail and how much yeah. I learn oh, from those failures. Good. Right? It's like evidence that Mr. Kaz. Um, I could do a failure fails. box or yeah. something. Right? A display just of just the worthless crap. thing. <laughs> yeah. It's like but sometimes it's like balls of filament that have just kind yeah. of bubbled up because I like something fell over. It could be anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. They always like, whenever something goes wrong, they like, politely point to it and, and it's like it's always behind me and I'm, i don't see what's happening and they're like politely pointing i'm like oh and then i pull it out and they're like can i have it because they, they really like cool to play to have something living in your classroom it's just like it yeah feels i know like it's awesome. like it's it's awesome but it's like this this thing they they can play with it and they can pull it apart so it keeps them busy especially if you have like tactile uh, kids or kids with ieps that need like something in their hands yeah um oh speaking that's, of that's that a, my game starts thursday Ooh. I played the offline version for about yeah. a month, not very well, waiting for devices. And mm-hmm. power strips came in, and iPads are being charged, and Thursday morning they pick them up. Oh, and so neat. I th- kind of think, like, if I don't have this ready to jump into yeah. on Thursday, I might not <laughs> get them. So I'm I'm ready. <laughs> awesome. And excited. That's cool. I know. Yeah. They're like, we want – one of my kids is like, we want snacks. <laughs> I have snacks as one of my my things you can spend your money on, yeah. And so he's like just super. And I'm not very excited about snacks, but this kid is, and he's motivated, and that's what it's about. So, so. you're you're gonna be motivated and psyched about it too. Yeah. What well, right? I yes. Uh huh. I like a good cheese cheese. I didn't go for like uh, candy. I went for yeah. like uh, Pringles and Cheez Its and uh, yeah. granola bars and things that were just less candy ish. Like I don't yeah. know. I just didn't yeah. like candy. You don't you don't need they don't need more sugar. I don't that's need not, it either. Yeah. Uh yeah, so that's exciting. And then um what was I getting? Oh, and then today was really a cool day because I got to put st- uh teacher student evidence on the wall. And Ooh. I'm curious to know how I mean I know a little bit of what you do just with side quests that you put up. But yeah. they've been working on these posters for about like almost a month, I bet. And mm-hmm. now they're complete. They're graded. They, eva- they, they self-evaluated. They evaluated others. It's all done. And I yeah. put them up on the wall, and they look awesome, and they display mm-hmm. my student's identity on the wall. What yeah, do you, that's what awesome. Do you, what do you end up putting? Like, How do you choose what goes on the wall? Um, right now, I'm putting any side quest that anybody turns in on the wall. Um, to like get people to think about like, oh, what we can do side quests. And it seems to be working because I have a, a ton. Like just I've never had this many people turn in side quests. Um, like how many is a ton? Not uh, that you exaggerate th- ever. I'm just curious. No, I never do. I think by now I have about 20 people that turn something in out of like 100 kids. Oh, okay. Which is pretty yeah, good. That it's is. About 20%. Um, and 
yeah, as I, as I said last time, I give them feedback on the first one that they turn in um, to to kind of like get them thinking into in uh, in like this growth mindset kind of a way where it's like, yeah, I should like apply my, my myself and look really at the details and make sure that I'm not just turning in something that does not look at all like a Time Magazine cover. <laughs> but, yeah, right. But actually what a Time Magazine cover looks like. And yeah. it just teaches them to look for detail stuff. So it's really cool, the first few. Um, That's awesome. And there, I have some really great examples that I printed out and put up on the wall. Um, That's yeah, fantastic. so... And then, yeah, once we get into, like, projects and stuff, then um, I basically pick and choose the ones that are the best and then also find, like, something that is not, like, amazing but looks like, you know, just average. Just so it's not just the the best people, but I do want it to look nice, obviously, right? So um, I try to pick and choose the ones that have, like, great information on it, but maybe it doesn't look as great and then the opposite it looks like great but doesn't have a lot of info on yeah. it to kind of like About. show them hey this one looks great but if you look closely there is like a couple of things that are missing and so on to kind of like have them reflect on stuff too yeah that's interesting because normally I, I have a feeling tribe correct me if i'm wrong tribe by emailing us at finding our tribe.net but mm-hmm. um i have a feeling that uh like for most teachers we try to hold on to the really good ones yeah, as like examples to show the next year because we want yeah. them to be able to like have this model this year. I had nothing, so I made my own sixth grader make a poster, mm-hmm. and then showed it. At, I like put together and said, "Wow, hey, here's what another to work." <laughs> I did. Yeah. I I did all the work. I gave it to uh-huh. my to my eleven year old, and I said, "Can you make a poster out of all of this?" Because this mm, is okay. what I gave my students, and I just need them to have an example. And he did yeah. a you know a decent job, and then I had something to show, but. If all we do is show them these great works that they can't live up to, yeah, I wonder if having that's really that's uh, almost like wisdom right there. Oh, to, really? Yeah. I, well, almost. I didn't say I'm not willing to commit fully, but for for side quests, I'm only putting up the great stuff, though. Okay. Well, yeah, for fair. so, but until well, let's, let's put it this way: for the avatars, if they turn something in that is like hand drawn, I put all of that up Got because it. it's hand drawn and right. whatever. But for the Time Magazine stuff, I I do not print it out until they're done done, the, until it looks like a Time Magazine cover. So it doesn't go up until it's ready. Basically, do you keep sending it back until it does? Yeah, I no. I just I just keep calling them up to me and was like, hey, this looks great, but here's what you can improve and make it look more. Go actually Google Time Magazine. Don't just like make up a Time Magazine <laughs> <Yeah>. cover, <laughs> right? So it's like, like the quick. You... How do I do this quickly? And you're like, no, some of these aren't going to be quick. Uh, yeah. Some of these are going to take yeah. a little bit of thought. So exactly. Yeah, well, yeah. that's that's really awesome. Uh, yeah, so great. And then you're doing a couple of things going on right now before we kind of transition. Uh, Tribe, we're kind of going to be a little bit more organized today. Hopefully, we're doing yeah, like it's we're, so far. We're, we're, I, we're, yeah, I it sounds pretty good. So uh, far, yeah, think. like things we're doing in the classroom, resources we're using. So you're doing Rome by the Numbers. Yeah. So um, last year I found uh, Kevin Rotten's website and. Uh, we should have him back on. Oh, it's man. His website's almost. great. I mean, if you have the time to really dissect what he's doing, it's good yeah. stuff. Teach, teach with Magic. He just came out with a book, which he mentioned like <laughs> as a side note. Yeah. Oh, when yeah. He by was the way, on. I have a book. So, yeah. By okay. the way, it's a book yeah. coming out. So um, we're, we're going to have him on soon, I think. Um, yeah. And so I found uh, this thing called Rome by the Numbers. And it's essentially, it's a lecture that just throws a bunch of numbers at kids, <laughs> which can be ridiculously boring right if you think about it but what he did was and what i really liked about it is he made it relatable to them so last year when i did it um i uh, we were online only obviously so it didn't have as much of an impact in my opinion because i couldn't explain stuff as well i couldn't just run over to the board and then draw something on there and and explain it etc but um because of the way it is structured um he really took a, a really good approach, Approach like um, do not lecture too long because the kids can only retain like seven minutes of about lec- of like information being bombarded fair. with and then and then they like kind of lose interest. So what he did was he, he always threw in like it's through Pear Deck and there's like numbers and then he there's a question they have to do. Like what is like one is, for example, um, Rome had 952 baths. 
what is something that you have eaten 952 of oh, in the past, yeah. right? And so it keeps them thinking not just about the number 952 baths, but 952 in general and how much is that. Well, and the concept of 952 baths is a little bit like what? Like a yeah. little bit out there for a lot of students. Yeah. And so, and this was in, in the context of aqueducts and how the Romans like brought water in and like, so you have all these numbers of like, there were like 500 miles of aqueducts leading to Rome and they brought in like uh, so-and-so, like 300 million uh, gallons of water a day, et cetera. So, which sounds really impressive, but then you're like, okay, so now look at, look at Shamu in SeaWorld, <laughs> the, 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 the orca tank. It has six million gallons of water in it, and there's a picture of it, and you see like the 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 whale jumping out of the water, and then you're asking them like, uh, so how many times could the Romans have filled this tank a day hmm. by having three hundred million gallons of water a day? And so it's really funny because some of them can't do math, so you can have fun with that. Yeah, you know, because sort it's relatively fun. simple. Yeah. It's it's relatively simple, and they they get it, and they're like like embarrassed in, in a good I way. I did math the other day. It was 3000 BC to, in essence, zero, even though there's not a zero. And then yeah. zero to 2021. How many years yeah. is that? What's yeah. 5,000 plus uh, 2021? And I yeah. got some crickets for a while until I, <laughs> until I scaffolded that sucker and got them. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, what? So... Um, and so there's just so many things in there where kids need to get up and need to walk around and then you measure their height in there and you, you do like all these kinds of things and he throws in videos of like um, a 45 degree drop at Splash Mountain, you know, like to, to illustrate like how, how steep that is versus like 0 0.00036 degrees that the aqueducts were <laughs> having as a slope, etc. Right. So there's like... Right. It's very, very visual. They walk around a lot. They're not just sitting there, and it's fun. Yeah. It's just, it's not just like numbers. Yeah. So that was taking a really boring lecture that could have been and turning it into something super engaging and fun to talk about with your students. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And then you, so. d you played our, one of our favorite games lately. Oh, yeah, uh, I did. Um, <laughs> we played uh, Poetry for Neanderthals. Yeah. Um, which I played ye last year uh, online, which was not as fun as you might imagine, and um, it, it's it was tough okay, in but person sometimes too. Yeah, it's tough. It's it's really hard. Yeah, the the kids don't think it is, so that everybody's like, "I want to do it, I want to do it," and then they stand there and they're like, uh, uh, and they don't know what to say. It's it's really funny. So, um, so the lead up to it was um, I had uh, two days essentially where we did like two or three games of gim kit where they practiced roman vocabulary because i need them to understand words like dictator and decimate and praetor and all those like roman names yes and words that they need to understand when we dive deeper into the unit and so i had them just play gim kit and they loved it and they came back the next day and are we playing gim kit again and i'm like sure why not you guys need the practice <laughs> clearly um and i'm i'm teaching them not only to to learn the words i'm teaching them strategies and how to actually learn from gimkit um because they can just click on next 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 or they click on show answer show answer show answer and then take notes um, where they're actually learning stuff and then i'm also teaching them the game gimkit itself which is really funny when kids are starting to figure out um where kids are starting to figure out how to actually play GimKit and um, are starting to make like millions of dollars versus others who are making like $300 because they don't know like about the upgrades and they're not using it correctly. So there's like a learning curve for them a little bit. And so we use that as the, as the precursor to our Friday guild battle, as I called it. Yeah. And even though it wasn't really a guilt battle, but it's kind of like one because they were playing against each other. And so we did it and they um, it was two rounds. The first round was write down. This all is the when words you, you did know. the poetry of for Neanderthals. Yeah. yeah. So first round was instead of giving them a list of words, I just had them write it down on a piece of paper. I had them write down um, the word and then the definition of the word. So we're not just like they're not just regurgitating whatever um, I give them, but they're actually creating their own questions or their own words. 
Um, and then that was that was a guilt battle because the team with the most questions wins. They got points for that. And then the second round is we take those questions. I sort through them real quick. And then it's because there might be doubles. And then uh, split the room up and have like one team on one side and one team on the other side. And then they play the game in Poetry for Neanderthals where they can only say things in one syllable words. So yeah, they, the have to, <laughs> they have to say, if you've never played it, you have to say things in just one syllable. It's kind I of, like bread. Like, yeah, that, that's not a good example, but yeah. No, it's not. But, <laughs> Those um, are one so, syllable. But <laughs> so uh, that game is essentially taboo. Um, the game taboo, where you have a list of words you cannot say. Here it is. You cannot say the word itself, and you cannot use more than one syllable as you're explaining it. Yeah. So it's kind of sim similar. Yep. Okay, so first period that I had was just mayhem and chaos <laughs> because I like was like, okay, let's put all our tables back uh, into the corner and let's keep one table in the middle and let's all gather around it. Nope. Not a great idea with 36 kids in your yeah. classroom. That does not work. Too much chaos. So, yeah. So we, we played it. It was fun, but I did have students who kind of like completely disconnected because they didn't want to play. They didn't understand it, whatever walking in circles somewhere, drawing stuff on the board, doing whatever. So it was just like, I don't want that to happen. Um, I need them all to either pay attention or at least not cause trouble. And so we debriefed afterwards and uh, we came to the conclusion... Can you make them get into a circle and like share their thoughts and feelings? What kind of debrief? Uh, just like, okay, let's bring the classroom back together and then like, what could we have done differently to make this a better experience? Oh. Um, what could I have done better? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And which is great, not only because it shows like that you are, that you care about like how things go, but that their input is actually valued. And so we came up with, or they came up with saying, okay, so instead of one table, how about we use two tables and have that as the room separator? And there's a little, like they are like a foot apart in the middle of the room. And then, so there's like, People cannot crowd it too much. And we're going to put chairs up instead of like having people walk around. So uh, that was the setup. So you have the room um, divided into two sections. And then on the one side is table one. On the other side is table two. And then there's two rows of chairs of like seven or nine chairs in a row. Um, and all of a sudden, the next period, I did it exactly like that. Everybody was sitting. Hey. Um, and it was no chaos. And it's it's amazing. It was just like a complete change in how this game like turned out. I mean, the first the first one was fun. We still had a lot of fun, but it was too much chaos. The other one was a little bit more controlled, and we had the same amount of fun. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I you know, but here's my concern: mm. when you play poetry for Neanderthals, isn't that yeah. a little insensitive to the cavemen out there that might be offended by that game? It is. So I don't know how you're. Do you taking remember those it. Geico commercials? Um, Do you remember those? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where the caveman yeah. was getting all ticked off, like so easy, a caveman. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then he's like, so, "Hey, shut up." Yeah. All right. That was my my way of transitioning us, and hopefully that not was, talking about it anymore. I thought I thought it went pretty well. That was great. I yeah. got the <laughs> the template off of uh, EMC to Learning. I had the game last year. This year, I didn't have to like prepare any slides. I just used the template, and. They really have ni have it nicely summed up on what to do. So if you are a member, the template for what? For um, it's called Caveman Grammar. Oh, for got it. Got for got Neanderthals, it. it's oh, just the presentation slides basically copy. for the game. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Do they does EMC two actually like tell you this is this is supposed to go with poetry for? Well, you don't you draw you don't really need it. Um, I think what they do is they make sure that they're allowed to use the the rules in the yeah. game. Um, I know for a fact that uh, two rooms and a boom that they have used that they did talk to like the developer if they can use it etc. So um, I'm pretty sure they're making sure that they're not just stealing yeah, ideas. Yeah. Oh no no that I would I would never accuse our besties. Over no no there but you know some. Learning. But some people do that right? They yeah. pretend like they came up with it, but they are definitely not that. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, that that kind of got dark for a moment. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get, you know, we're going to try. Our goal is to keep these podcasts uh, reasonably short and give you guys kind of just nuggets. So we talked a lot, Fabian, you were talking a lot about engaging your students in the classroom mm -hmm. with Rome by the Numbers and how it really became more active. I was doing, I've created 
and because we don't have devices, I've had to like go back and create worksheets oh out of things God. that were never worksheets yeah. in order to give students like the work to be done. And so they have notebooks in my class, like lined paper notebooks, and and I can glue things in there, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. But it does start to feel like a little bit like we've gone backwards because I don't for have... For you, yeah. Yeah, for me, for <laughs> sure. And so one of the things I did today was I printed up uh, a map of the Hawaiian Islands, really, really big, You know, taped it all together, laminated it, and then have students uh, work in groups to kind of like pre-test identify the islands and then afterwards you know go up and and move them and do them and put them around uh the class yeah. on this map and that was like a little bit more engaging i would say than if they were to just like do it in front of them at the table yeah um, like what uh, so i i was just like thinking about this question like how to take a typical lesson and make it more engaging we're probably talking about getting them up so anytime yeah, up we get them up we're good, good. Like, yeah. what are other things, like, maybe just quickly in the next couple of minutes, like, what are, like, other things that teachers out there that are listening, like me, can do to just, like, take a lesson that's just your typical, read this, look for this, define this, and then yeah. make it more engaging? Uh, read Fully Engaged and the other two books by Matera and, yeah. and Meehan because that is literally exactly that. Or there's another book that's called Boredom Busters um, which talks about like how you can take uh, boring old worksheets and make a game out of them essentially. Because let's face it, like who of your students is actually going to keep those worksheets? Like probably like 1%. All of them, right? right? No? Oh, shoot. Um, sorry. So if you <laughs> tur turn, like, let's say they have to fill out this worksheet and it's for it's for review, it's they don't have to keep it, whatever, and it's um, and you turn this into, like, a game of trash kit ball at the end, so they're done, and then uh, they are in teams and they uh, you set up a trash can and the team that can make it into the trash can from, like, a certain spot in the classroom uh, can earn points. Like, I mean, why not, right? They are going to throw it away anyway, so why not make a game out of it? And all of a sudden, it's like you can hype this up and say, hey, we're going to have, like, this throw-off at the end and the team with the most points gets whatever bragging rights. And all of a sudden, it's like it's a different it's a different story. They're, they're they're doing something for a reason, not just for learning, but because they want to throw this in the trash and get points for it. You know? Yeah, and I was also going to say to this question because I know I made the question, but like, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> is that like play more games yourself? So the more so, for instance, yeah. Jumanji. If you've never played the Jumanji game, it's mm, very yeah. fun. It's cooperative where people roll dice to try to save each other and yeah. all the people that are playing have to roll the same thing in this amount of time. So there's a little bit of a time to that. So you go, oh man, they all have to save each other by rolling the same thing. How can yeah. I use that? Or what I love the most is in the middle is this red decoder. So it's like red film and mm -hmm. you put the card in, you know this, and you can read yeah. the decoded message. And so yeah. I actually on Donors Choose put up some stuff that got funded of just that cell that red cellophane. And I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, if I could just figure out a way to print a decoded message, they would have to decode it. Yeah. And that would be so much more fun. Like if the more so my thought was play more games because there's so many little you nuggets. Get, you get so many ideas from that. That's right. Um especially like these th there's like a bunch of games that contain like lots of mini games. I don't know what they were. There was like one um, that is based off of a TV show. I don't remember, but it's they have like lots of mini <laughs> games really in there. Uh, I if I if I find <laughs> it, I'm gonna put it in the notes. Okay. But um, they have like tiny little games in there that you play as as part of like a bigger competition game. You can put it in our show game. notes as things yeah. I forgot. Um, I did you, uh, um, did you see that? Oh, I sent you a text about the mini game that a student put on the poster. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It God, was find was how many weird. rabbits. If you follow me on Twitter at finding my Aloha, you will yeah. see a picture of uh, a student in the corner of their poster. Cause they were out of room wrote, uh, I think they wrote mini game and they said, find yeah. how many rabbits. there are. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was super cute. I thought, Oh man. Yeah. So play more hilarious. games, read fully engaged. 
Uh, think about how to get students up and out of their seats. Yeah. I was thinking let students talk. Yeah. Like I was thinking like the more Actually students talk. are able to engage with each other, even if they're still sitting because of COVID restrictions or whatever, like yeah. have them do it in a pair, pair up. Anything think, you do, pair Think up. pair share is yeah. always great. Yeah. And like changing that around so they not always talk to the same person, but say, okay, we're going to find somebody who has the same color shirt or whatever. And just to get them out of their seats and they talk to somebody else. Yeah. I did wheel of names.com or you, oh, yeah, you, you do it on flippity. Yeah. I did that the flippity, other day yeah. and just said, yeah, the wheel, the wheel said these two people are going to partner up for this, this exercise. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Awesome. There you go. Cool. Well, tribe, that's it for us. We're going to keep it short and uh, sweet ish. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think it's that short, but it's it's I yeah. think it's reasonably <laughs> shorter than normal if you just sure. let me get through it. But we're yeah. really glad you're a part of our tribe and we hope you feel a part of the community like we do. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, send us messages or emails. Uh, Fabian, where do they find us? Uh, everything you need to know is in the show notes. As always, we have a button on our website, findingourtribe.net, uh, where you can click and you can leave us a message like Charlie Myris, Southwest Ohio did. And uh, you can find uh, our our Twitter addresses, our link to YouTube, to our series with Jamie Halsey on Jedi in the Classroom gamification uh, introduction uh, series that we did. And everything you need is there, even the stuff that I forgot. I will try to put in the show notes. Yeah. Under, yeah. I forgot these things. Here they are. Stuff I forgot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, Tribe, we're really glad you're part of our Tribe, and we will see you next time.